Now, on September 4, 2014, there was an article written by Keith Augustus Burton. This is in the Spectrum magazine, which is very liberal. Seventh-day Adventist magazine, and actually I would say it is anti-Seventh-day Adventist, as most of the articles are in disagreement with standard Seventh-day Adventist theology. But there's an article here called the IS and the US. And the title is quite intriguing. It seems to be pitting the Islamic State against the United States of America. But knowing the background of Spectre magazine, I thought it would be worthwhile to read it. And I did. And the article gives a little bit about the background of the Islamic State. Also, some of the background of uh, Middle Eastern history from a, a basically a standard liberal viewpoint that the West is the one at fault for going over to the Middle East and uh, hundreds of years ago and trying to. And they, they basically they ruined the Ottoman Empire and. Basically, the, the Muslims, they just want to run things their own way, and the West is the one at fault for messing it up for them. In his section called The Reality, he writes, As far as the IS is concerned, the U.S. is the most formidable obstacle to the achievement of its goals. This is not to say that its leaders are not wary of other Western governments, but it is the United States that acts with impunity, and even thumbs its nose at the United Nations. Under the license of the War on Terror, hundreds and thousands of innocent Muslim civilians have lost their lives, and the massive embassy in Baghdad serves as a reminder to the region that our nation's global tentacles are not restricted by borders. Here we have a, um, a troubling assertion. He, he is asserting the way IS sees the US, but he is writing it as if he is supporting the IS position. I mean, there's no qualification that when he writes that the United States acts with impunity and even thumbs its nose at the United Nations and calls it, basically he puts down the war on terror. He just gives his idea of what the IS thinks about the US without any qualifications. It makes it look like he agrees with that. And then he uses the term, our nation's global tentacles. But it gets worse. Strangely, while the strategies of the IS and the US are different, their objectives are the same. They both want to exercise ideological and political influence over the people of the so-called Middle East. Their rationales may contradict each other, but they would both like to see a region that is friendly to their contrary political agendas. In their path to fulfillment, both have bloodied their hands in the name of righteousness and blinded their eyes to the reality that violence only begets more violence. The IS may choose to broadcast their inexcusable horror by recording executions of journalists, while the U.S. prefers to preserve the anonymity of the untold casualties of their extraordinary renditions if the omniscient God has recorded the name of every perpetrator. So here he's clearly putting the IAS and the US. They are both perpetrators, they're both blooding their hands, they're just doing it in different ways. And I find this totally reprehensible. In the conclusion, he basically says that that the United States, we are being brainwashed, and that it is Satan who is using patriotism to make us go fight in the Middle East. But then I looked at the bottom, it says it's Keith Augustus Burton directs the Center for Adventist Muslim Relations at Oakwood University. So that, uh, that rang a big bell with me because I've had quite a bit of uh, interaction with Adventist Muslim Relations people and the ones that I have met and have had interaction with are mostly Muslim apologist. In fact, I've had uh, I've had some tell me that we we don't even need to tell the Muslims that uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not necessary. And basically, the they say the Muslims are they're saved where they are. They already worship the same God we do, and um, they're pretty good people. All we have to do is 
basically show them that we're their brothers and we love them and that's it. So I went to the internet to find out more information on Keith Burton and I see that he is the author for the Sabbath School lesson, second quarter 2014, titled Christ and His Law. I also saw that he holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Religious and Theological Studies from Northwestern University. Now, I know there are many of our Adventist leaders who have higher, so-called higher degrees from secular universities and nearly all of them are liberal in their thinking. So this raises quite a large yellow flag in my mind. So I went to his website and I see where he has this sermon, I guess it is. It says he presents Bob Marley, Preacher, Prophet, Prince. And again, there's no qualifications here. It seems like he is, this is what he's talking about, Bob Marley. And of course, you know, Bob Marley was a Rastafarian, uh, just a totally different religion, not Christian at all. So I went to the Center for Adventist Muslim Relations at Oakwood University to see what they had to say. And right there in the uh, facts, it says, unfortunately, there are many Christians and even some Muslim converts to Christianity who believe that the Muslim God is different from the Christian God. However, that is not the position of Center for Adventist Muslim Relations, Oakwood University. And right off the bat, this is the biggest error because the God of the Bible is emphatic that he has a son. Whereas the God of the Quran is just as emphatic that he has no son. Now how can it possibly be the same God? And of course when you read the Quran and you find many, many things that contradict the Bible, like in the Quran you, you give almsgiving to uh, pay for your mistakes, your sins, and you can eat camel meat, and you can marry up to four wives, and when your skin is all burned off, if you're in hell and your skin is all burned off, uh, Allah will be so kind as to put fresh skin on you so that you can taste hell for all eternity. And that's not to go into all the other ones where it says that Jesus Christ was just a messenger, just like all the other prophets before him, and he didn't really die on the cross and to fight for Allah. And yeah, it gets pretty sick, actually. How in the world anybody could get this mixed up idea that that God is the same God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is beyond me. And in coming across this viewpoint, I see more clearly now why God said that. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I always thought as a kid, well, that's, that's kind of strange. But now I see the point in it. He's not the God of Abraham, Ishmael, and Esau. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is who the Promised One comes through. This is the true God. All the other gods are the enemy of God. And it's just, it's very sad to see that many of us Seventh-day Adventists, our leaders at the end time here, we don't even, we don't even know who God is. We've got him mixed up for some Muslim God that is totally contrary to the real God. So I went to his, his personal Facebook page. He's got a couple, it seems like. And here it is. You can see it right here. Keith Augustus Burton. And the whole thing is just quotes from the Quran on Ramadan. Just like I said earlier, it's, it seems like some of these people are Muslim. At least they're not, they're not solely Christian, that's for sure. And I don't know how it's possible to serve two gods at one time. So I sent him an email uh, asking him to repent, and this is the reply I got back from him. First of all, Spectrum does not allow me to comment on their website, which is why I sent him an email. And he tries to tell me that the, the uh, United States has killed as many as 1.4 million civilians in this war on terror. That he is trying to build bridges of understanding between Adventists and Muslims. And is committed to upholding the undergirding kingdom principles of love to all humanity. 
We fully understand that we will be targeted and misrepresented for sharing the love of Christ with our Muslim brothers and sisters, but our commitment to God is more important than human approval. Here's a short sample of one of his sermons. It's putting down the American government and I just want to distance myself as far as possible from this type of talk. While the currency is engraved with the words, in God, we trust, there is absolutely nothing in this country's European history that can verify this to be a truism for our government. In every era of European-American history, a group of people has been victimized and exploited. America claims to be a Christian nation. But there's very little as we look at Christianity and the practices of this nation historically that can give it that right or that honor. In fact, as I study my Bible, I find that there is absolutely no nation upon the face of this earth upon which God has granted his approval. call on you, Keith Augustus Burton, to turn away from spreading air, and I call on all my Adventist leaders that are caught up in this Chrislam thing, especially Lester Merklin, Stephen Dickey, Gerald Whitehouse, to stop teaching that the Muslim God and the Christian God is the same, because they are not. That is blasphemy. The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God.